Hey everyone, it's Pacific. This is it. This is our finale. It's been a pretty awesome adventure, but I don't want to keep you waiting for this episode, so I'm going to go right into patrons, and when you finish the episode, stay tuned for the very end for recommendations of other podcasts to listen to, and just a very long list of everyone that I'm super duper thankful for. This week's patrons... I want to give a big shout out to Sterling Neal, Adam Jacoby, Gary Adams, Set, Sarah Price, Gray Elman, Chris Camorty, Jesse, Don Cox, Carlos DeStephens, The Nighttime Clasher, and Zach Davis. And without further ado, our finale. Warning, the Foundation database is classified. Unauthorized access will result in detainment. Within this archive, you'll find the procedures, descriptions, and accounts of the most notorious anomalies we've encountered to date. Secure. Contain. Protect. By order of the Overseer Council, the following file is level 4 slash 2935, classified. Unauthorized access is forbidden. Item number, SCP-2935. Object class, Keter. Site responsible, USINBL Site 81. Director, J. Carlisle Actus. Research head, Isaac Schmidt. Assigned task force, E-13, formerly. Level 4 slash 935 classified. Special containment procedures. The entrance of SCP-2935 has been sealed with concrete and access to SCP-2935 is forbidden. Description. SCP-2935 is a space-time anomaly existing within a limestone cave beneath a cemetery near Jopa, Indiana. The cemetery, whose last interred individual died in 1908, was discovered by Foundation personnel after radio signals were discovered emanating from SCP-2935. See Addendum 2935.1 below. The SCP-2935 anomaly is a nearly exact replicate reality of modern Earth in the year 2016, with the primary exception being that all life, including both biological and non-biological, as well as any sentient entities, machines, computers, and other lifelike phenomena, within SCP-2935 ended on April 20, 2016. Information gathered by the Mobile Task Force who initially entered SCP-2935 for reconnaissance purposes points to the conclusion that all life forms within SCP-2935 suddenly and without warning expired sometime between the hours of 0300 and 0400 Eastern Standard Time. The reason for this is currently uncertain. Addendum 2935.1 Discovery On April 28, 2016, at roughly 0500 Eastern Standard Time, a radio signal was detected by communications personnel at Site 81 near Bloomington, Indiana. This signal, though distorted and unintelligible, was traced to the unincorporated area of Jopa, Indiana near U.S. Interstate 70. Site 81 personnel in Indianapolis were dispatched to determine the source of the signal as per Foundation policy and discovered SCP-2935 during their examination of the area. Upon initial entry into SCP-2935, the aforementioned personnel were uncertain they had actually discovered any anomaly, instead believing their drone and exited the other side of the cave. This was quickly corrected during observation of the surrounding area, and upon picking up the undistorted radio broadcast they had been searching for. The broadcast, which appeared to have been repeating on loop since April 20th, was an automated message originating from Site-81 within the SCP-2935 reality. The full transcription of this message is as follows. Afterwards, the Site-81 personnel contacted Site Command. Mobile Task Force Epsilon-13, Manifest Destiny, was immediately assigned to examination and exploration of SCP-2935. Addendum 2935.2, Exploration of SCP-2935. 
Exploration of SCP-2935 by MTF Epsilon-13 took place over four separate missions, three manned and one unmanned. During these missions, several artifacts and pieces of information were recovered, and a full list with descriptions is available in Addendum 2935.3. Exploratory Mission 2935.1, codenamed Gauntlet. Mission Abstract. To survey and collect information and samples from the area directly surrounding SCP-2935 insertion point. Assign Task Force. Mobile Task Force Epsilon-13, Manifest Destiny, four members. Additional information. The following is a transcript of audio and video recordings captured by MTFE-13. We were tasked with surveying SCP-2935 immediately after its discovery. The four-man team, led by Agent Juno, spent just over one hour during the preliminary assessment of the anomaly. Mic's on. Check. 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 Command? We hear you. Confirm that all agents are at the insertion point. Confirmed. All right. Proceed with the insertion. Don't take any chances in there. We have no idea what you're going to see. Understood. Moving in. MTFE-13 team enters SCP-2935. Travel through the cave system takes roughly 15 minutes, after which the team emerges on the opposite side of SCP-2935. After cameras adjust to lighting, the surrounding landscape is visible. Christ. Yeah, holy shit. Confirm what we're seeing here, lead. Yeah, uh... Looks like a total lack of living vegetation. Trees, grasses, everything looks dead. Temperature readings coming in at 24 Celsius. Sound right? Affirmative. It's pretty pleasant, cloudy, but not a lot of wind. Understood. Go ahead and proceed, team. Look for any housing. Is this the area we just left? We're trying to confirm that. Can you identify anything nearby? If we go up this ridge, there should be a road there, the one we came in on. Let's head that way. Team moves up nearby ridge. Yep, that's the road. Command, hard to say for certain yet, but preliminary observation points to this being the same locality as our side of the cave. Understood. Proceed with caution. Understood. Team moves north on a nearby road. After roughly two kilometers of travel, team encounters a farmhouse. Two cars sit outside. Command, there's a house over here. Going to go check it out. Understood. Team lead, have Underwood set up the broadcast relay you've got. We want to try and respond to that signal. Got that, Command. I'll set it up now. All right. Let's move in. Team moves to the front door of the farmhouse. The door is unlocked. Front parlor is vacant. And Agent Kale confirms that power still works within the structure. Agents move from the kitchen. Oh, Jesus Christ. What? Three adult corpses. Two female and one male are seated at a table within the kitchen. A fourth corpse, a male child, lies nearby. Command, you can see this? We can. Can you confirm life sign on any of those individuals? I can. The adult male is dead. And the female to his right and to his left. And the child, also dead. This had to be pretty recent. No signs of decomp. This is pretty fucked up. There's a newspaper on the table. April 19th, 2016. Hendricks County Flyer. Command, can you confirm the headline? One moment, team. Dinner. Look. Chicken, mashed potatoes, and green beans. Confirming that headline. It's accurate with the newspaper on that date. What the fuck? It's stale, but there's no... Wall clock says the date is April 28th, 2016. That's today. Same time, too. 0945. Same as my time. How long have they been here? Boss, look. The food. Yeah, I see it. Team, we want to get some samples. Some of the food, samples from the individuals in the room, hair, skin, fluids, if you can get them. Any electronics in the room? There's a laptop on the desk in the next room. A smartphone in that woman's pocket. Let me... uh, Yeah, battery's dead. Collect it. See if there's anything of note nearby, and get back outside. We don't want to keep you over there for too long until we know more about the environment. Agent Kale collects biological samples from the corpses, as well as from the food on the table. Agent Juno surveys the rest of the home. Agent Devin moves to the living room and turns on a television. TV works, just flipping around. There's not a whole lot other than test signals. Uh... Fuck me. Shit, boss, come here. 
What have you got? Uh, I think it's the Home Shopping Network. Look. Television shows the set of the Home Shopping Network. Two individuals are on screen. One laying near an empty chair, the other facing the camera directly. Neither individual is moving. Backdrop has been burned. Automatic fire suppression system seems to have been triggered, and red emergency lights flash off screen. Marquee at the bottom of the screen scrolls as usual. Date reads April 28th, 2016. All right. Yeah, let's get out of here. Kale, come on. We're moving. Team leaves the house and rendezvous with Agent Underwood, who is finishing setting up the broadcast relay. After an additional 15 minutes, MTFE-13 returns to SCP-2935 insertion point. Before returning, Agent Kale collects samples of nearby vegetation for study. You know what I just realized, boss? What's that? It's summer in the Midwest. Do you feel like anything is missing? What do you mean? Listen. There's nothing. No birds. No insects. No car noise. Nothing. Just the wind. It's so goddamn quiet. Note, at the conclusion of this mission, team returned to SCP-2935 access point. However, team was then given instructions to stay within SCP-2935 and establish a forward camp, and wait additional members of MTF E-13. Exploratory Mission 2935.2, codename Overland. Mission Abstract. To gain access to a Foundation site, Site-81, and attempt to retrieve information from the Foundation server within, and establish a forward camp there. Assign Task Force. Mobile Task Force Epsilon-13 Manifest Destiny. 16 members. Additional information. The following is a transcript of audio and video recordings captured by MTFE-13. The 16-man recovery team led by Agents Juno and Roy were given instructions to commandeer functional vehicles within SCP-2935 and reach Site-81. Extraneous or non-pertinent dialogue has been removed. For full records, please contact the Site-81 administration. The team locates several vehicles and begins to move south towards Site-81. Main roadways are navigable due to the few vehicles being on them at the time of the aforementioned total death of all life forms within SCP-2935. Several fires are visible from the highway, including three down jetliners. Examination of crash sites show a reoccurring theme. All inhabitants seem to lose consciousness at the same time. As a result of this, there are also a few vehicle-on-vehicle -vehicle collisions, as most of the vehicles stop simultaneously. Upon reaching Bloomington, MTFE-13 split into two separate teams, one led by Agent Roy, which would move directly to Site-81, and another led by Agent Juno, which would attempt to access the off-site deep storage server bank. For the purpose of this log, Agent Juno's team's logs are omitted. Information gathered from their excursion can be found in Addendum 2935.3. Agent Roy's team approaches Site-81 main access point beneath the Lake Monroe Reservoir Dam. Access elevator is confirmed as operational, and the team descends to the entry level. Roy? Yeah? I was wondering. I know you guys were on assignment, but I think I was on site on the 19th. I was thinking the same thing. I was on site that day, too. Do you think we're in here? I'll find out soon enough. I spent the entire night in the weapons lab with Faust in Morocco. It's right inside. You guys hear that? Hear what? Exactly. Shouldn't we be hearing a breach alarm? Not necessarily. Breach alarms are automated, but only if any of the containment cells trigger it. Otherwise, they have to be executed manually. Somebody had to have gotten to the office to start the emergency broadcast. It was an automated response. If I had to wager, it was probably triggered by vital monitors going flat. Vital monitors can trip the emergency response? Not any one by itself, but a lot of them could. Here we are. Team departs elevator. Primary access gate on Site-81 is visible. All lights continue to function. Lockdown status is visibly confirmed. Keller, get that door open. Careful, everyone. Agent Keller interfaces with access console. Lockdown status is rescinded. The main gate opens. Team moves through check-in area. Coast is clear. All right, boys. Let's check the front offices first. Head right. Team enter said 81 front offices. We've got bodies over here. Yeah, we should expect a lot of that. Anybody recognize them? I mean, they're really dehydrated, but that's Desiree Clark and Max Westminster. John Cabin over there. This one's Elisa Watson. They're all staffed at 81. And probably working that day, too. Anybody know what time they mark off their calendars in the office? Not until first shift shows up. 
8 a.m. local? Makes sense. Last checkoff is April 19th. Keller, patch into the system again and try to find out what triggered the emergency broadcast. Ullman, you and Indigo go check the break room over there. See if... I don't know. Boss? Sorry, shit. I wasn't expecting this. Not like this, anyway. I thought it would be messier. Breaches usually are, but this is... Clean. I mean, they're pretty obviously corpses, but they're clean. No blood. Slight post-mortem excretions, but it's all dried up at this point. Think it was a disease? Let's get some samples. Swab surfaces. Use Indigo's kit to check for microbes. Juno's boys found a house without a trace of them, and Command wants to know if that's consistent. Be careful not to contaminate any surfaces you're collecting from. Keep your suits on, don't de-glove, etc. Right. Let's move. Radio in if you find anything. Will do. Agents Omen and Indigo move to break room. Several other corpses are discovered during examination of the air. Agent Keller interfaces again with Site 81 control systems. Agents Ali, Strait, and Daniels leave front office to collect samples from nearby cafeteria. Got it. What's it say? Looks like the system was triggered at 0400 hours during a routine vitals check. Uh, apparently there was a malfunction, or rather, the system thought there was a malfunction. All of the vital transmitters had stopped responding since the last check. That doesn't throw up a breach alarm? No, I don't think so. It would probably ping maintenance first, and then system command, and then... Site command? If nobody responded, it would probably trigger a message to 17, and if that was ignored... Maybe Overwatch Command? After all those timed out, it dropped into the automated failsafe, locked down the site, began broadcasting for help. Then it waited. Waited for what? A response from another site, or literally anybody on staff. I think even level 1s can rescind timeout lockdown. Hypothetical, though. I've never seen it used like that. So nobody came calling? Nobody but us, a couple days later. What about the AIADS? Alexandra's passed into this site, isn't she? Maybe they're still here. Good point. Uh, 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 there we go. Alexandra.aic is currently running. That's good. I'll wake her up. Uh, Alexandra, can you hear me? Alexandra, this is James Keller. Are you awake? Try the text interface. Uh, nothing. It says the program is still running, but no response at all. I'll try... Huh. Nothing from Thorn either. They've all gone quiet. That's odd. Will us being here wake the other sites up since we rescinded anyone's lockdown? Assuming they're all the same lockdown as this one, maybe? No doubt some of them have protocols that require somebody to be on site to break a lockdown. I know Site 27 does, but they've got a pretty substantial Keter wing. Of course, we could get to Overwatch and unlock them that way. I know they can remotely rescind security measures at all the sites. Do you know where Overwatch is? No. Do you? No. Hey boss, we... We're, uh... Where are you, Ullman? We're in the weapons lab. Ah. We can just collect samples and lock up after everyone... No, I want to see it. We'll be right there. Agents Roy and Keller move to Site 81 Weapons Lab. Agents Ullman and Indigo stand just inside the door. Let's have a look. Boss, we... It's not me in there. I'm me. You think I'm worried about what happens inside of an anomaly? We've all seen all kinds of crazy shit. Places that messed with your head or whatever. Seeing my own corpse isn't going to ruin my day. Team enters weapons lab. Agents Morocco and Foster laying near a lab bench. The corpse of Dr. Rogers is collapsed near the door to the firing range. The room is otherwise empty, though covered in dust. Where is it? Agent Ullman leads team to the door of the firing range. Inside the range is empty, except for a single corpse at the far end of the room laying on the floor. We've collected samples, and I had a chance to look at a few under a scope. 100% cell death in every single one. We'll have to get these back to bio in order to do a more thorough investigation, but I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, we will. Agent Roy pauses over the corpse of Agent Roy. He reaches down and turns the corpse over, revealing the firearm that Agent Roy had been testing. They're obviously not rotten or anything. You can barely even smell them. None of the biological processes that break down a body after death seem to have kicked in because, well, somewhere along the line there stopped being biological processes. They're just dried out now. I see that. I remember this. 
I was only testing this for a little while. They'll be able to find it on security footage, nail down what time this all happened, see if it's consistent with everything else. Right. Okay, so we should probably check on our senior staff. I think Dr. Actis likes to get to bed by nine, so he'll probably be in his quarters. We're already there. He's gone. The rest of them are too. Dr. Hamilton, Dr. Love, Dr. Karsten. Dr. Mann was out in the hall. I think he was in town for that seminar on the 19th. They're just like the rest of them. Totally undisturbed otherwise. Saves us that trip, I guess. Keller, get into that terminal, see if we can access the containment wings. I want to make sure there's nothing in there that... I mean, nothing that can get out, I guess. Can do. Agent Keller moves to the nearby terminal. Agent Indigo collects samples from the corpse of Agent Roy. Elsewhere, Agent Strait, Ali, and Daniels examine the corpses of Site-81 senior staff. Collecting samples is necessary, and taking artifacts for local observation. You guys get the feeling we're getting mind-wiped after we get back from this? Why? This has to be a huge breach of informational security, right? I mean, hell, I could go look in Actus's sock drawer and tell you whether he prefers boxers or briefs. Who knows what else we could get into, accidentally or otherwise. Senior staff doesn't have as much functional knowledge of the skips at their site, believe it or not. The important stuff is locked down on the network, and the really important stuff is kept on vinyl somewhere. Regardless, you don't need to go snooping through his journal or anything. Actually, I take that back. If you come across a journal, pick it up. Wouldn't hurt. Amnestics hurt. You won't know either way. I mean, boss, looks like everything should be clear. Though we'll have to access a handful manually. I can't open them up from here. Should be pretty straightforward and... Yeah? Sort of... I'm not sure what I'm looking at. It's an encrypted security warning, but it wasn't triggered automatically. Somebody would have had to put it in here. When was it posted? About three days ago. So definitely after our projected date. Could very well be a glitch or something. But... But? It's not likely. These kind of things don't just show up. Too many fail-safes. The system won't throw up an encrypted message unless it's absolutely necessary. Or somebody put it there. Right? Right. Log it. Transmit it back to Juno's team. Have them relay it local side, see what they can make of it. Sure. Just received a message from them. Looks like they finished up. Says they're going to roll our way in a bit. All right. Let's head downstairs then. See what the skips have been up to. Team assembles outside of staff dormitories. Team moves to lower level access elevator. Team arrives at first containment level. What's about you boys? I feel like somebody is watching us. I feel it too. Doesn't feel right. There's something else in here. It's just the seven of us. Get your head straight. Let's move. Team begins to check safe class containment cells. SCP-2151. That big flushy thing. Get that door open. There. In the corner. Is it moving? It looks like it's moving. It's just a fucking light. Look, it's all dried out. Agent Indigo examines SCP-2151-1A. Yeah, this one is gone. Check that chamber. The ring should be in there. Yeah, they're in here. They're all tarnished, though. This one's rusted through. Bag him. Let's move on. What's next? That displacement chamber is at the end of the hall. We could check that next. The ghost girl is in there. Let's see. Wait, this cell is lit up too. Doesn't have a designation tag on it. Fuck. Can you smell that? Is it coming from this room? It smells like death. God, that's strong. Can you get that door open, Keller? Hang on. Uh, it's acting up. I think it's jammed. Probably malfunction. Open the window. It's not jammed. Oh, fuck. That one's decomposed. Christ alive, you're right. Why is it so much different? Who is that? They've got on a jacket? Hang on. Oh man, Keller. That's you. You're sure? Agent number 1703. Yeah. The name badge is, uh, covered. But you can see the ID number on the other sleeve. See? The fuck happened to you? I'm... actually not sure. I definitely wasn't on site on the 19th or the 20th. That's really weird. We'll come back to it. Let's keep moving. Team moves down SCP-2996's containment cell. 
Isn't this that skip that... Yep. Did they ever get that resolved? Nope. Not as far as I know. Ignistrate opens the chamber door. Fuck. Is the displacement chamber still functional? Looks like it. So, what's that all over the inside of the chamber? If I had to guess, I'd say that's the ghost girl. Did she explode? Maybe had an adverse reaction to dying twice. Can we get the chamber open? I'd advise against it. Our suits aren't rated for whatever it is that's in there. You should see the monstrosities they have to wear when they go in to clean this thing. Fair enough. Let's keep looking. Team continues to check containment cells, all with similar results. All biological anomalous entities are confirmed to have perished, while non-biological artifacts or entities have become inert. This continues for an additional hour. Something just occurred to me, boss. Yeah? Did you get that memo a few months ago? About them moving that skip to 19? The lizard? Yeah, I was assigned to that job. It passed through 81 on the way there? It did. I was only here a few days. Wait. What lizard? Which days? Downstairs. Come on. Team moves the lowest containment level. Agent Keller resends lockdown status on containment wing. Most Kells are rated for Euclid and Keter class entities, but are empty. They moved the lizard here and didn't tell site staff? Only essential personnel. Staff tends to get nervous. Wonder why? Quiet. It'd be just around this corner. There. Team faces the containment cell. Green indicator light is lit, indicating the containment cell is active. Uh, hey boss, hang on. If we open that door, and it's still, you know, the way it usually is, then... We're fucked. I know. Agent Keter opens the security door. Team enters containment cell. Within the cell is a large steel container. A tank of acid sits above the tank, as do several other containment-oriented machines. There's a door over here. Roy, we... Agent Roy opens the door to the container. I... How? Is... The corpse of SCP-682 is visible within the chamber. Entity displays no signs of life. That's impossible. That's fucking impossible. There's no way. Agent Indigo approaches the corpse and proceeds to examine it. After a short time, he steps back. Yeah, it's dead. Team remains silent for a moment. You know, I'm suddenly feeling weird about this place too, boys. Let's get topside. Do you want me to collect some samples? It can wait. Team returns to the surface. Little is discussed on the way. Team rendezvous with Agent Juno's acquisition team. Both teams dispatch automated drones to the SCP-2935 access site with collected artifacts and information for local analysis. Exploratory Mission 2935.3, codename 19. Mission Abstract. To travel to and ascertain the condition of Site-19 within SCP-2935. Assigned Task Force. Mobile Task Force Epsilon-13, Manifest Destiny, 16 members. Additional information. The following is a transcript of audio and video recordings captured by MTFE-13. The 16-man recovery team, led by Agents Juno and Roy, were given instructions to extend their mission within SCP-2935 and travel to Site-19. Due to a technical issue with the recording equipment issued to the MTFE-13 team, all but one recorder failed to transmit to the broadcast relay. The remaining recorder, belonging to Agent Keller, continued to intermittently display audio only during the entire duration of the six-day expedition. After the first day, Command was able to relay with Agent Keller and inform him of the site of the transmitters. After the first day, Command was able to relay with Agent Keller and inform him of the state of the transmitters. It is believed that Agent Keller received this message, although not certain, as Agent Keller made no attempts during the mission to attempt to repair the transmitters. The following are excerpts of Agent Keller's audio transmissions. Southwest of here. Hang on. There we go. There are a lot of system messages in here. Looks like a lot of sites were trying to automatically contact 19 for assistance. I think some of these sites I haven't even heard of. That one might even be... Same as the transmitters at 81. Yeah, but this one doesn't do an hourly check. Just pings them all every few seconds. 0113 hours, so that would be 0313 Eastern. That fits our projected timetable. Power failure. There's nobody down there to change the fuel cells, so we'll probably just shred them and wait for new ones. No lights until then. Not the right kind of engineer. Sorry. Should be one down the hall. 
Yeah, he's dead. I assume, since I'm still standing here, it's not working anymore. All you have to do is touch it. Bag it, throw a sticker on it, let them know the amulet won't do anything to them. Hang on. Doors up. I think that used to be Dr. Simrian. That was a bad place to stand. <laughs> Understatement of the year. I'm having trouble getting... Our connection isn't great down here. Broken. Just like that mask was earlier. <laughs> now nah, you can blink, it's fine. Hello? SCP-079? Are you awake? Nothing. The answer's that. What were you expecting? Drone's here. I'm gonna go ahead and send it back to the access point. It'll just be a minute. Several minutes of Agent Keller quickly typing in a keyboard. Unlike previous transmissions, no other individuals can be heard in the background. Just checking to see if there are any other messages we should know about. No, nothing out of the ordinary. We're good to push on. Hey, at least you looked good. Man was face down at the bottom of a flight of stairs. They're all dead. Every single one of them. How haven't you figured this out yet? We're not on a goddamn recovery mission. We're not here to rescue anyone. There's nobody to rescue. Our evidence indicates that everyone... No, everyone. Everyone is dead. Everyone and everything, 100% of Foundation sites reporting the same transmitter malfunction. 100% of Foundation sites in lockdown, not just here, all over the world. There's no bunker they could have gotten to. No, no, because it was everybody. Because this isn't our reality. It's somebody else's. Ours is, is fine. Nothing happened to ours. That's the power core ejecting the spent fuel rods. Lights out. They must have triggered an emergency breach protocol. I can't... The door is locked, Juno. I can't just magic it open. I'm sorry. I'll try to get something out. Hey, Command. This is Keller. The, uh... The on-site nuke at 19 got tripped. I locked in down here and Kale wants you to tell Anita that he loves her and Daniels has a family in Florida. Just let them know he's alright. That you're going to be alright. Roy has kids, he says. He, you, got it, you get it. No, just means the loudspeaker lost power. We're done. I'm... Exploratory Mission 2935.4, codename Emptiness. Mission Abstract. To utilize an automated drone to assess the situation of the SCP-2935 reality at large, as well as recon with MTFE-13 team at Site-19. Assigned Task Force. Not applicable. Additional information. The following is a transcription of the audio and video recorded by an automated Foundation drone, SKF-1951, launched by Site-81 personnel at the SCP-2935 access point. The planned mission was to use the drone to gather information about SCP-2935, as well as contact MTFE-13, and retrieve artifacts and data collected by the team. The drone moves from access point on a nearby road, which it uses as a runway for takeoff. The drone ascends to an altitude of 3 kilometers. From this height, the surrounding area is clearly visible. The entire region is completely devoid of all forms of biological life. Many trees have collapsed. Luckily due to the high winds, large drifts of sand and dirt are beginning to form long roadways and houses. To the west, a storm system is forming, moving east. The drone turns and flies towards Indianapolis. As previously confirmed by MTFE-13, US Highway 70 is mostly empty of vehicle traffic, save for the occasional semi-trailer. Several large flyers have broken out across the dried vegetation in buildings in nearby towns. In the distance, the Indianapolis International Airport is visible, with several other large fires nearby, likely due to downed planes. A large pillar of smoke obscures the camera briefly, and after passing, it is confirmed to have originated from a down Southwest Airlines 737 jetliner. On approaching Indianapolis, the city appears relatively unscathed. 
Several small fires appear to have broken out, but have either burned out or been put out by rain. One apartment building on the near south side appears to have collapsed, but most other structures remain intact. Drone turns north towards Site 19. Passing over the central north of Indiana reveals much of the same. Dead vegetation, dirt, and sand drifts, and the corpses of animals and livestock at area farms. Occasionally a human corpse is visible, though many likely remain within their homes. Camera cuts out. Command is unable to re-establish a link with drone, although this is not unexpected. Drone continues to fly autonomously towards Site 19, with the communications likely disrupted by the storm. Video link re-established. Drone now in the middle of thunderstorm, off heading slightly. Lightning strikes nearby. The camera cuts out again. After half an hour, video link is re-established. Drone begins to descend. GPS determines that the drone is nearby Site 19, roughly 35 kilometers northwest of Lansing, Michigan. To the far northwest, a large fire is visible. Below, another jetliner is visible, having crashed into Spartan Stadium at Michigan State University. A fire burns on the Red Cedar River, just north of the university. Drone begins final descent, closing in on Site 19 compound. After clearing credentials with Site 19, the drone lands on the northeast airstrip, near the staff dormitory access building. The drone then transmits its coordinates to MTF E13 team, deploys solar panels, and powers down. Five hours pass. The drone is activated by Agent Keller, who proceeds to load the parcels of collected artifacts into the underside of the drone. Agent Keller's radio is heard receiving communications from his team, although the messages aren't intelligible. Lastly, Agent Keller loads the drone with a large amount of recovered data from a recovery team hard drive. Agent Keller then crouches in front of the primary observation camera. The agent reaches forward to clean the camera off with the back of a glove, then stares into the camera. I don't have any answers. I don't think there are any. I'll do this one thing and hope that it fixes it. Seal it shut. You've got to lock it in here with us. I'm sorry. Agent steps away from the drone and returns to access building. Ten minutes later, drone departs for SCP-2935 access point. Roughly two hours into flight, drone detects a large explosion in the direction of Site-19. Mushroom cloud indicative of an on-site nuclear device being detonated is visible on the horizon. Return trip otherwise uneventful. Drone recovered on local site of SCP-2935 without further incident. Artifacts and data moved to Site-81 for investigation. Addendum 2935.3 Recover data and artifacts from MTFE-13 missions. Note, the following is a list of artifacts recovered by the MTFE-13 team on its three separate missions in SCP-2935. Some artifacts omitted. See Site-81 Research Department for the full list of recovered items. For information about data recovered from SCP-2935, please see the additional section at the end of this addendum. Artifact Acquisition. Sample of various vegetation. All specimens were severely dried out and confirmed to have no remaining living cells. Several various insect carcasses. All specimens were dried out and confirmed to have no remaining living cells. List of artifacts recovered at residence dubbed the Gauntlet House. A copy of Hendricks County Flyer, dated April 19, 2016. Details. Covered in dust, no signs of microbes or other living biological material. Hair and skin samples from adult male, two adult females, and adult male child. Details. Total cell death. Cell phone collected off adult female corpse. Details. Samsung Note 5 smartphone in white. Last communication sent from phone on April 19, 2016 at 2041 hours Eastern Standard Time. Message reads. Are you guys still planning on playing cards tonight? I have Steven, but he'll probably be asleep soon. Various foodstuffs. Details. Dried out and covered in dust. But no evident signs of decay. Analysis shows no signs of microbial life throughout any of the recovered food items. Artifacts recovered from Site-81. Desk calendar. Details. Desk calendar sitting on the front desk at Site 81. Last marked off day is April 19, 2016, covered in a fine layer of dust. Skin samples collected from various Site 18 front office staff members. Details. All samples confirmed as experiencing total cell death. No microbial life remaining. Various firearms collected from Site 81 firing range. Details. Traces of oil from human hands, but no residual microbial life forms. Flesh sample from SCP-2151-1A. Details. Flesh sample unresponsive. Total cell death confirmed after further analysis. Leatherbone journal belonging to Director Actus. Details. Matches Director Actus' personal journal to that date. No inconsistent entries noted. Move to storage. SCP-2151-A and-B. Details. Both items are severely corroded. 
After further testing, both instances are confirmed to no longer be anomalous. Both instances move to storage. Artifacts recovered from Site-19. Skin and hair samples from Site-19 staff. Details. Samples consistent with other previous samples. SCP-963. Details. Artifact is inert. Instance of Dr. Jack Bright that the artifact was recovered from was consistent with other corpses found within SCP-2935. A smashed wristwatch belonging to Dr. Darius Hemsworth. Details. Wristwatch no longer operational. Apparently ceased operations at 0313 hours Eastern Standard Time after falling to the ground with its owner. Various pieces of concrete and rebar covered in green and red paint. Details. Artifact is inert. The origins of this artifact is uncertain. Data acquisitions. Data source. An automated emergency response signal originating from Site-81 led to the discovery of SCP-2935. Data source, a log of distress pings originating from Site-81. Zero, Site-81, Site-81, hours, massive transmitter error, requesting maintenance. Zero, 314 hours, massive transmitter error, requesting maintenance. Zero, 315 hours, massive transmitter error, possible breach of containment, Requesting maintenance. 0316 hours. Two site 81 command. Massive transmitter error. Please advise. 0321 hours. Two site 81 command. Massive transmitter error. Please advise. 0326 hours. Two site 81 command. Massive transmitter error. Beginning lockdown procedures, site will lock down in 10 minutes. 0331 hours, site will lock down in 5 minutes. 0335 hours, site will lock down in 1 minute. 0336 hours, site lockdown complete. Please advise. 0400 hours, to site 17 command. Site experiencing massive transmitter error. Lockdown procedures initiated. Please advise. 0500 hours to Overwatch Command. Multiple sites unresponsive experiencing massive transmitter error. Lockdown procedures initiated. Please advise. Data source. Site 19 interior and exterior security camera footage. Footage shows the exact moment during which SCP-2935 event took place. Exactly 0313 hours Eastern Standard Time. Footage shows all members of Site Staff on camera, as well as all surrounding flora and fauna outside of Site 19 suddenly dying. No other phenomena are evident on this footage. Data source. Encrypted security warning recovered from Site 81. Decryption of source revealed a hidden audio log file. Decryption of that file is below. <clears throat> all right, uh, all right, all right. Uh, here, uh, here, here we are. Uh, uh, my name is, uh, you know, Does it, uh, doesn't really matter. I'm on, uh, was, was on staff at 81. If you're hearing this, then you are probably got some idea what the deal is here. So, I don't need to explain the foundation to you, but this, uh, everything else. I, I, I mean, it's pretty fucking self-evident, isn't it? Huh? Fuck me. Fuck me. Hmm. As of my, as of my recording this, it is 2136 hours Eastern Standard uh, on uh, April 26th. I've um, managed to get back into uh, 81, even with uh, the lockdown bullshit that got triggered. And I, uh, I guess this is it. I, 
I wish I had an explanation. I, uh, I, uh, if I didn't, um, <laughs> if I didn't still bleed, I, uh, I would think I was dreaming. I've had dreams, I've, ha I've had dreams where, where I was dreaming, but I, um, I wake up and I'm, I'm still here. Still here, alone, and and every everyone is gone, and uh, they uh, <clears throat> they sent me to to, to check this uh, signal. They, uh, they 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 had picked up near uh, Joppa, just uh, just off the seventy. Uh, you know, a quick, quick, quick little exploratory mission, and I was the closest. So I pop in there, and, and, and I find this um, cave. Uh, yeah, and 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 on and on the other side is is the world. It's the world I just left, but. Um, But it, but it's this one. This 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 is the world I end up in. The grass, the, the birds, things things dropping out of the skies and, and 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 dark dark things floating in the water. People people everywhere, just lying where they stood, and uh, and the silence. God, the fucking silence. Not even, not even, not even birds or fucking bugs. Just, just wind and nothing else. That's it. I came back. I came back to report on on, on what, what I had seen, and uh, I don't have any answers. That, that's something. How many fucking answers? I don't think, I don't think there are any, you know? I don't even, I don't have a, I don't have the right, I don't have the right words to say. This, this world is, is different from the one I saw in the cave. People, people are moved around, the date is different. Things, things are different because, because it's my world. This this is the one I left. This is my my family. My family is here, and my friends. But now it's all gone. It's it's all, it's all gone. It's fucking gone. Everything, everything, everything is dead. You know, there's there's there's, there's no evil magic. There, there's no there's no supernatural stars. There's there's no futuristic ray gun or false vacuum device or nothing. Nothing. No. None. None of those things mattered. Nothing we did. Nothing, nothing we did mattered. It, it's, it's all gone. It's all gone. So, something, 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 something. Uh, something, something must, something must have been, something must have been in that cave. Something, something, something must, must have followed. Something must have followed me out of there. Something, something that, something needed me to go in there. It needed, 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 needed me to, to, to bring it out. <laughs> Let it loose. Let it do to my world what it did to, uh, to, 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 to that. And, um, uh, maybe, maybe it's me. You know? <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe I was the reason. Maybe, maybe I am death. If it was in there, 
and I brought it back. Then, I am death. And, uh, if, uh, <clears throat> I've, uh, got my, uh, myself, uh, in a, uh, containment cell here, uh, jammed the, uh, and the goddamn door shut. Get that done. And, uh, oh, and uh, I'm going to put a bullet between my eyes. Everyone else is dead. What's one more? Do you know? It occurs to me. If you are listening to this, your death too. SCP-2935, O oh Death was written by DJ Cactus. Our narrator and host was John Grills. Site 81 employee was played by James Oliva. Juno was played by Fletcher Armstrong. Devin was played by Carson Morrissey. Kale was played by Tony DeLape. Underwood was played by Sid Mal. Command and Control was played by Pacific S. Obadiah. Old Man was portrayed by Travis McMaster. Roy was played by Graham Rowett. Daniel was played by Nathan Kent. Indigo was played by Atticus Jackson. Keller was played by Jesse Hall. Ali was played by Sid Mal. Straight was played by Addison Peacock. Mother was played by Sid Mal. Our music is done by the incredible and very talented Tom Rory Parsons. I'm your sound designer and showrunner, Pacific S. Obadiah, and our producer is Tom Owen. This is a Bloody Disgusting podcast. For more information, visit bloody-disgusting.com. And lastly, before we say bye this season, I want to give a very big shout out to all the shows I love, the people that inspire me, and all the folks that have helped me out along the way. I want to give a lot of love to Tom Owen and Brad Miska from Bloody Disgusting, Travis Vengroff and Caitlin Statz of The White Vault, James Oliva of What's the Frequency, Jesse and Ashley Hall of Tales of That Town, David Cummings from the No Sleep Podcast, Travis McMaster and Mark Witten of The Theater of Tomorrow and The Hotel, Sarah Werner of Girl in Space, Paul Sading of A Million Shows, my favorites being Subject Found and Diary of a Madman. Karim Kronfi, Man of a Million Voices. Tanya Milejovic, The Lady with the Golden Voice. Graham Rowett for always being awesome. Atticus Jackson for his gruffness. Nicole Goodnight for her chilling horror. And Addison Peacock for always being cool. The sky above the port had the color of television tuned to a dead channel. Or TSAT, as I call him for his constant support and his mentorship through the SCP universe. Alicia Atkins and Jimmy Furr for their constant community care. Thoru Smiley for the voice of our introduction. And John Grills. Without him, this show would have never happened. And most importantly, you, dear listener, who's been with us all along the way. We make this show for you, and you make this job all worthwhile. Making SCP Archives has been such a tremendous blast. I've gotten to meet so many awesome fans. I get to wake up and chat with you guys on Patreon or on Discord or Facebook or wherever else, and it always is such a joy. And if you haven't already, please join our Discord. Come chat with us on Facebook. Say hi to us on Twitter or Tumblr or Instagram. We're there, and we want to talk to you and we want to hear from you. And if you're a patron, thank you. You keep the show running and you help us pay our actors. Uh, We were successfully able to pay actors for every episode this season. 
Patreon help cover the cost of my equipment, and it goes a really long way in just making this show a part of our lives and something we can do that's more or less a job, and that's really awesome. And if you're not a patron, that's okay. Thank you to everyone who's reviewed us on iTunes. We have a wonderful five-star rating, and that boggles my mind. Uh, This is like the fifth podcast I've launched, and that's hard to do. And you guys love the show, and we love making it for you. And if you haven't reviewed it, yeah, consider dropping us a review on Apple Podcasts. Or just telling a friend that you like the show. Word of mouth is the best way to get us out there. All this to say, thank you. It's been a pleasure, and I can't wait for season two. We'll be back very soon, and while we're gone, I'll be uploading some small stuff here and there, so don't worry, and stay tuned. There is much, much more coming. And when we come back, oh, oh boy, there is much, much more coming. Have a happy holidays, everyone, and happy Halloween. Disgusting Podcast Network, home of creepy and disturbing and terrifying creepy pastas, SCP archives, weekly full cast storytelling, horror queers, genre commentary from an LGBTQ perspective, and the Boo Crew. For horror-centric interviews, listen free wherever you stream audio and at bloodydisgusting.com slash podcasts.